questions. Um, first of all, you, know, you both obviously do a lot of due diligence, and you, now that you're covering the protests, you have the benefit or maybe the weight of a security team. What do you do about contingency plan? You, know, you do your research ahead, you do your risk analysis, but particularly, you know, when you're in these places, very, very isolated, you know, what kind of contingency plan do you have in case the worst case? Well, I mean, since I work full time for the Washington Post, I would check in with my location to them uh, on a regular basis. But you can only, you know, that only can help you so much. So they know if I don't talk to them, maybe at the end of the day, then they have reason to worry. Uh, we have a Mexico City bureau, and there's a couple of employees there. But contingency plan. I mean, if you're like in one of these remote places and things go south, uh, I don't know, getting a car drive really fast. I mean, it's you just have to. You know, negotiate, talk. I mean, you're kind of got to hope that outside forces can kind of help you out in that situation. I mean, you try to plan as much ahead as, as possible, um, and just try not to do anything stupid um, or be in, a, in really the wrong place. You know, that's why we, like you said, we did our due diligence and everything ahead of time. But you, know, you just got to use your instincts. And do you change hotels while you're on? Like, let's say you're in a place for a week. Would you? Yeah, you kind of change your routine a little bit. I don't know, it would depend. I mean, we'd have to be pretty freaked out if like, we thought, oh, we got to change a hotel every single night. Oftentimes, you go to these towns and there's only one place to stay. Yeah. So it's, you don't have too many options. But uh, you, on a lot of stories like this, you don't tend to stay in one place for that long. It's, it's different than, um, there's a, a dear friend of mine, uh, Kirsten Luce, and she did a story in northern Mexico for National Geographic. And they kept telling her, oh, this is a geographic assignment, so you can spend all kinds of time there. And she's like, no, you understand. The longer I spend here, the more dangerous it is. Like, I don't want another 10 days in this place. I need to get in and get out. So it's it's a different set of circumstances. More often than not, we're hounding our editors. Like, I need more time. I need more time. But in a lot of these places, you just want to get it and as you know, work as hard as you can and then go and then maybe come back later. What about yourself? Not you know when you're not doing urban protests, but you're going to you know for instance when you're doing stuff on the gangs, isolated Sure. So the New York Times has a really proactive security plan. Um, the main thing is to to try to do everything you possibly can to prevent problems. Um, especially with security, it's always better to prevent than to have to respond to to security problems. So for instance, I mean, we really like will not go on a trip until we have everything locked down. You know, even from the permission from the mafias or the permission from whoever's in control of the territory they were in. Um, that's something that I'm very, very strict about because I've had problems when I was younger uh, with security issues. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I really am very strict about having the permission from the mafia or the gangs wherever I'm at before we even fly to that area. Um, because just travel, even traveling in and out and you know, knocking on the door and cold calling is dangerous. Um, but as far as contingency plans, um, and before we're even allowed to go and do like an interior trip like that, I have to do a, a very long security memo and talk to the New York Times security experts. Um, it's something that we talk about that my that they're constantly like monitoring our Kind of go really bad because I feel like we, you know. No, <laughs> it's, like, like, it's like working for your parents. Yeah. You know, like, where I are mean, you? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's something like security is extremely serious, and it's not, you can't take that lightly. Um, I mean, I'm working for this and there's a lot of freelancers that don't have the luxury that I have to yeah. be able to work with the New York Times. It's very um, cool. And with editors, it takes security so seriously. But we really, um, you know, everything from all the pre planning, we have to submit a security plan, have it approved, have it discussed, and then it's constantly, like, you know, Michael said, you know, this is where I'm at, so we're constantly sending, like, your GPS locations. Um, There's apps, too, that monitor your location, so it can work. And having a good network of local people, too, and that's especially important for freelancers or people who are thinking of going to some of these places and don't have a major institution to back them up, as it were. Uh, to have those local assets on the ground and people you can count on, like, hey, if I don't come back at a certain time, and they know people, so it, it's good to invest time and not just 
parachute in, like, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there, I'm going to, you know, go into the slums of Caracas, or I'm going to go hang out in Acapulco and get these photographs, because it's, it's, it just doesn't happen that way. So it takes tons of research, and I can't tell you how important it is to do your research before going to any, any story, whether it's a light feature story or something heavier. But also, like, people going into these situations, they think, like, you know, the, the most at risk I'm going to be at is that I'm going to get kidnapped or I'm going to get killed. That's actually not true. Like, you're most at risk by not having um, a secure car. You know, like your car breaking down in the middle uh, of a highway and then not having enough water. So, you know, more journalists die in um, car accidents than they do in actual assaults or war. So, for instance, like, when I go into the interior, our car has everything, you know, even like if we're stuck on the side of the road for two hours. I have enough water and food and water filters, um, you know, yeah, to fuel, you know, in case that happens, because that happens a lot. And people have been killed because they've broken down on the side of the road in Venezuela and haven't been able to, like, make it through the night or, you know, for the next day. So it's not just planning things like, oh, take your bulletproof vest and take your helmet, like, that's really, Superficial. You need to be thinking of things like, do I have water filters with me all the time? I have a water filter uh, in my camera bag at all times. And a fix, fix a flat. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> Tell you stuff is great. It saved us in Iraq. Yeah, in Africa, we would always have three spare tires. Um, yeah, so. it's like. And we would have, I don't know, you know, we, when it was, got really, really muddy, we always had a blanket of wood and you know, a cable to hold it on. That's a good point. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, you have to put just as much time and, and effort into planning and logistics for those types of things. Like if your car gets stuck, if our car breaks down, or if there's a, a roadblock and we have to spend the night on the highway because, you know, I'm not American, I like to block the roads a lot. Um, and you never know who's blocking it either. 